So we are starting with M1 paper. And this paper is the first paper of uh, June 2022, the first June paper. So let's get started with this. Let me get everything in the proper order. Okay, so this is all good. And uh, let's get started. Screen is shared and that's all good. June 2022, paper 41, question number one. The question says, a car starts from wrist, and let me start underlining from the beginning. A car starts from wrist, moves in a straight line, constant acceleration for a distance of 200 meters, reaching a speed of 25 meters per second. The car then travels at the speed for 400 meters, before decelerating uniformly to rest over a period of five seconds. First thing, find the time for which the car is accelerating and then sketch the velocity time graph for the motion of the car showing the key points. Now, first of all, let's focus on the acceleration part. That would be like this on a velocity time graph. So this point, is the origin 0, 0, and it reaches a speed of 25 meter per second, and we don't know the time. So this is t, 25. And the area under graph of this velocity time graph, this is 200 meter. So now we will say that half into base, which is t, into height, which is 25, because this is zero, this is t, so the base is t. And this is zero, this is 25, therefore the height is 25. And this equals to 200. So therefore t is 200 into two divided by 25. And this comes out to be 16 seconds. So it took 16 seconds for the car to reach a speed of 25 meter per second. That is the first part. Can we do it using equations of motion? Yes, we can. U is zero, V is 25, and uh, we have distance, which is 200. And we can say S is equals to UT plus half AT squared. So the UT portion is zero because U is zero. So therefore 200, is half into A and we don't have A and then we have T square. So T square is what we are looking for. So now uh, that has two unknowns in it. What if I use V is equals to U plus A T. So V is 25 and U is zero and A is what I'm looking for and t is unknown. So I think it makes, uh, let me just delete it. I think it's a waste of time doing it this way. 16 seconds. So if it took 16 seconds for the car to reach a speed of 25 meters per second, that is the first. Okay, let's move to the second part. Now it says, sketch the velocity time graph for the motion of the car. Now, first of all, let me draw a grid. So this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. And there are three portions, a portion for acceleration, a stage. And then there is the constant speed part. And then there is deceleration like this. So first of all, we know that we just calculated it took 16 seconds for the acceleration part. It started from wrist and it reached a speed of 25 meter per second. So velocity goes on the vertical axis, the unit is meter per second, and time goes on the horizontal axis and it's in seconds. And then, we don't know how much more time is taken. 
but we know that this distance was 200, this was 400, and it moved at the speed of 25 seconds. So let this time interval be T. So therefore, 400 is equals to 25T. Again, coincidentally, T comes out to be 16 seconds. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, my bad, I think. June 2022, paper. Hold, hold for a second. Okay, let me just continue with it. Okay, why is the voice not coming? Okay. So therefore, 16 seconds had passed, and then this time is 16, so this adds up to 32. And then five seconds for the deceleration, so 32 plus five, this is 37. And we need to find this area under graph. So this area is half into base, which is the difference between 32 and 37, which is five, multiplying with 25. So this comes out to be 62.5 meters. Therefore, the total distance traveled, if I want to calculate it for this part, that is 200 plus 400 plus 62.5, which comes out to be 662.5 meters. So the graph is done and the total distance is there and we need to find the average speed. So therefore, average speed is defined as the total distance divided by the time taken. So the total distance divided by time taken. The total distance is 662.5, time taken is 37 seconds, and we have to use a calculator, and this comes out to be 17.9 meter per second, correct to three significant figures. So the first question is completed in five minutes. So this is the first one. Let's move to the second one. Okay, let's get started. June 2022, paper 41, question number two. The question says two particles P and Q of masses 0.5 kg and 0.3 kg respectively are connected by a light inextensible string. The string is taut and P is vertically above Q. Now let me draw a small diagram. So there is this particle, this is P, and then there is this particle that is Q over here. And P is vertically above Q and they are connected by a light and extensible string. So let me just draw a string. So let me just draw it properly, hold for a second. I don't know what seems to be the problem. Okay. <clears throat> now these two particles are connected by a light and extensible string, something like this. Now uh, the weight of P is 0.5 G. So let me label it before I read the question further. The weight of Q is 0.3 G and they are connected. And what else is there? A force of magnitude 10 Newton is applied to P and this 10 Newton is acting vertically up. Find the acceleration of the particles and the tension in the string connecting them. Now, the particle, the system is going up. A system is made up of two particles in this question. Now, what about the tension? For P, the tension is acting this way. For Q, the tension is acting this way. If I focus my attention on P, the equation would be something like this. 10 minus 0.5 G minus tension is 0.5 into A. Resultant force is 10 minus these two is equals to mass of P into acceleration A. 
Similarly, if I focus my attention on Q, what do I observe? That T is like the pulling force. So T minus 0.3 G is equals to mass of Q into A. When I add these two, what do I get? The T and the negative T gets canceled out. So 10 minus 0.5 G, which is five, minus 0.3 G, which is three. Remember G is taken as 10 meter per second square. Acceleration due to gravity is equals to 0.5 plus 0.3 A, which is 0.8 A. So therefore two is equals to 0.8 A. Therefore A is two divided by 0 0.8. And the value of A is coming out to be 2.5 meter per second square. So that's the acceleration of the system. And what about the tension? Let's use just one of the equation. So let's use the blue equation, actually the green one. So T is equals to 0.3 G plus 0.3 A. That is 0.3 common. G is 10 and A is 12, 2.5. Let me correct myself. Okay. Now let's find T. So let me use the green equation. So T minus 0.3 G is equals to 0.3 A. T minus 0.3 A into 10 is equals to 0.3 into 2.5. Therefore, let's make T the subject that comes out to be 3.75 Newton. That is the value of tension. And this question of connected particle is completed in three minutes. Let's move to the third question. Uh, let me just double check. I think the sharing is off for some reason. Let me just reshare. <clears throat> Okay, let me double check. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, let me just switch this. June 2022, paper 41, question number three. The question says, a crate of mass 300 kg is at rest on a rough horizontal ground. So let's start underlining. There is a crate and the mass of the crate is how much? That is 300 kg. It's at rest on a rough horizontal ground. Coefficient of friction is 0 0.5. Force of magnitude x newton acts at an angle alpha above the horizontal. So don't forget it's above. It's applied to the crate with sine of alpha is 0 0.28. Then it says find the greatest value of x for which the crate remains at rest. That means it's in equilibrium. Now, first of all, let me just draw a floor. Let me draw a box over here. Let me draw a force of magnitude x, something like this, not like this. Hold for a second. Let me continue with this. <clears throat> Let me draw a box. That's the crate. And then let me draw a force that is acting up like this. Now, this force has a magnitude of x newton. This is the horizontal. This is the angle alpha. And sine of alpha is 0 0.28. Now, we know that sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha equals to 1. Therefore, cosine square alpha is 1 minus sine square alpha. Therefore, cosine alpha is square root of 1 minus sine square alpha. And we will be dealing with the acute angle. So this is 1 minus 0.28 square square root. This comes out to be 0 
Now, why do I need this? Because I need to resolve it. So first of all, when I resolve it, this is parallel to the x-axis. This is x cosine alpha. And this is perpendicular to the horizontal. That is x sine alpha. Uh, let me use my terms correctly. Okay. <clears throat> Now let me resolve this force X. So the horizontal component is X cosine alpha and the vertical component is X sine alpha. What else is there? Normal reaction force R is there. The weight is acting down, which is 300 G Newton, which can also be written as 3000 Newton. Remember G is taken as 10 meter per second square acceleration due to gravity. And we have the F max acting to the left, according to this diagram. Now, first of all, let's make R the subject. So we will write R plus X sine alpha, sine alpha is 0 0.28 equals to 3000. Therefore, R is 3000 minus 0.28 X. And what else is there? The coefficient of friction is 0 0.5. And we know that F max, that is equals to mu R, that is 0 0.5 multiplying with 3000 minus 0.28 X. This comes out to be 1500 minus 0.14 X, that is F max. Now this particle remains at rest. It means X cosine alpha equals to F max and cosine alpha is 0.96. So X cosine alpha equals to F max, that is 1500 minus 0.14 X. So therefore 0.96 X plus 0.14 X equals to 1500. Let's take X common out, that is 0.96 plus 0.14, which is 1500. Then Therefore, X is 1500 divided by 1.1, which comes out to be 1363.63. But since we have to give the answer to three significant figures, we will write this thing as 1360 Newton. That is the greatest value of X. So now this question is completed in four minutes. So now three questions are done. Let's move on. Question four. Let me just take some water. Sorry, my bad. This is not this question four. This is M1 question four. Let me just charge my Apple pencil. Just let me double check. It's all good. Okay. Let's read this question. June 2022, paper 41, question number four. This is a horizontal line. This is a vertical line for reference. What we see are three forces. F Newton making an angle of alpha, 20 Newton making an angle of 40 degrees with the horizontal and 100 Newton making an angle of 20 degrees with the vertical. Now, I'm more interested in the angle with the horizontal. So therefore this angle is 70 degrees. So I'll be using in terms of 70 degrees, the resolution. Now it says three coplanar forces act at a point. The directions are shown given that the three forces are in equilibrium, find F and alpha. Now, first of all, all the horizontal component are marked in green. So this is F cosine alpha, and this is 20 cosine 40 degrees, and this is 100 cosine 70 degrees. That means F cosine alpha should equal the sum of these two. So let me write it down. So F cosine alpha equals to 20 cosine 40 degrees plus 100 cosine 70 degrees. Let me use a calculator. So therefore, F 
cosine alpha is coming out to be 49.5229. That is F cosine alpha. This is equation number one. Now let me go up to the diagram and let me resolve it vertically. So this is F sine alpha. This is 20 sine 40. These two are acting up and 100 sine 70 is acting down. So let me write it. F sine alpha plus 20 sine 40 equals to 100 sine 70 degrees. Therefore, F sine alpha is 100 sine 70 degrees minus 20 sine 40 degrees. And again, using a calculator, the value of F sine alpha is coming out to be 81.1135. This is equation number two. Now, equation two has a sine in it. Equation one has a cosine in it. So let's divide F sine alpha divided by F cosine alpha. That is 81.1135 divided by 49.5229. And when we divide, what do we get? The Fs cancel out. Tangent of alpha equals to this fraction. Therefore, alpha is tan inverse of this fraction, 81.1135 and 49.5229. And therefore, the value of alpha is coming out to be 58.60 degrees. And this is the angle that we are looking for. Now I can choose any equation, either this one or this one and plug in the values. Let me choose the second equation. So F sine of 58.6 degrees is equals to 81.1135. Therefore, let's make F the subject and F comes out to be 95.0 Newton. So that is the answer for this equilibrium question, which was completely comfortably done in four minutes. So four questions are down. The fifth question. Okay. So let's get started with this. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just adjust one thing. This is too much down. Hold for a second. So let's get started. June twenty twenty two, paper forty one, question number five. Two racing cars, A and B, are at rest alongside each other at a point O on a straight horizontal test track. So first of all, there are two cars and they are at rest alongside each other at a point O on a straight horizontal test track. The mass of A is 1200 kg. The engine of A produces a constant driving force of 4,500 Newton. When A arrives at a point P, its speed is 25 meter per second. The distance OP is D meters. Remember, it started from O. And the work done against resistance between O and P is 75,000 joules. This is by the car A. Now, first of all, this is the straight track. So this is the starting point that is O, this is the ending point that is P, and this distance is D. And the initial speed is zero meter per second, and it's 25 meter per second over here. Work done against resistance, this is 75,000 joules. And there is a driving force, which is 4,500 Newton. And therefore, work done by driving force should be 4,500 into this distance D. 
Is there a change in potential energy? No, it's zero because it's a horizontal surface. Will there be a change in kinetic energy? Yes, there will be a change in kinetic energy, which is half into 1200 into a final speed square, which is 25 square minus zero square. So let's put everything together. So this is work done by driving force that is change in potential plus change in kinetic plus work done against resistance. Work done by driving force that is 4500 D. Change in potential is zero. Change in kinetic is half into 1200 into 25 square. Work done against resistance is 75,000 joules. So now using the calculator, we find the value of D and it comes out to be exactly 300. And this is proven in this first part. So this particular part is done. A lot of space is given. Now let's focus on the second question. Car B starts off at the same instant as car A. The two cars arrive at P simultaneously with the same speed. The engine of B produces a driving force of 3200 Newton. And the car experiences a constant resistance to motion of 1200 Newton. Find the mass of B. Now, first of all, the initial speed is again zero meter per second. So we have this as zero meter per second. This is at point O. And when it reaches point P, that's again 25 meter per second. The distance is 100 meter, which we have found. And the driving force is 3200 Newton. Therefore, work done by driving force is 3200 in 200. And similarly, work done by resistive force, yeah, resistance forces, whatever you want to call it, that is 1200 in 200. Again, the change in potential energy is zero because it's still the same horizontal surface. There is no change in height. And the change in kinetic energy is half. The mass is unknown. That is what we are looking for. And this will be 25 square minus zero square. So let's put everything in the correct perspective. So this is work done by driving force, which is 3200 D. And this equals to change in potential, which is zero. And change in kinetic, which is half into M into 25 square. And work done against resistive forces, that is 1200 in 200. Now remember this D was known. So let me write 100 over here. So now making this the subject. So we will find the value of M and M is coming out to be 640 kg. That is the mass of the car. Now it says find the steady speed which B can maintain when its engine is working at the same rate as it is at P. Now we have the formula for power. That power is force into speed. So the force that is we are using, that is 3200, that's the engine force, and the speed is 25. When we multiply, we get the power as 80,000 watts or 80 kilowatts. Now, let me just draw a small diagram just to give you an idea. And over here, let me draw this car. And the forward force is power, which is 80,000, divided by the speed which we are looking for. Because we are looking for the steady speed, therefore the acceleration is zero meter per second squared. And what is the resistive force? The resistive force is 1200. In other words, the forward force and the backward force is zero. That is why the resultant force is zero. That is why it's not accelerating. It's traveling at constant speed, steady speed. Remember the three words, steady, uniform, constant. They all mean the same thing. 
So 80,000 divided by V is equals to 1200. Therefore, 80,000 divided by 1200 equals to V. Therefore, the V value from the calculator is coming out to be 66.7 meter per second, correct to three significant figures. So now this question is completed related to work energy power in seven minutes. Question, my bad, another, so P1. Okay, so let's get started with this. This is a variable acceleration question. June 2022, paper 41, question number six. A particle starts from a point O and moves in a straight line. The velocity of the particle at time t seconds after leaving O is given by this particular equation where k is a constant. First part, verify that the particle returns to O when t is equals to two. Now, the very first thing that we read from this equation is that it starts from point O. That means initially the displacement is zero because the displacement is with respect to O. So that is the condition that we'll be using. Second thing, in order to find the displacement equation, let's integrate the velocity equation. This is 3t squared minus 2t cubed dt. When we integrate it, what do we get? K is a constant on the outside, let it remain on the outside. This is 3t cube over 3 minus 2t raised to power of 4 over 4 plus a constant of integration c. So this is k multiplying with t cube minus half t raised to power of 4 plus c. This is s. Now we know that when t is 0, s is 0. So this is zero, this is k, this is zero, this is zero plus c. So eventually c is coming out to be zero. So therefore the equation is k t cube minus half t raised to power of four. That is the displacement equation. Verify that the particle returns to O when t is equals to two. That means displacement should be zero when t is equals to two. This is what we will verify without even knowing the value of k. So let's plug in t is equals to two. So s is equals to k. This is two cube minus half of two raised to power of four. This is k, this is eight, this is eight. This is coming out to be zero. Yes, it's, it's verified, it's double checked that when t is equals to two, the particle returns to the origin. Let's move on to the next step. The question says, it is given that the acceleration of the particle is negative 13.5 meter per second squared for the positive value of t at which v is equals to zero. So let's again look at the velocity equation, which is k 3t squared minus 2t cubed. Let's make velocity equals to zero. So therefore k, and let me also take t squared common, and this is three minus 2t equals to zero. So these will disappear, that's a constant. T is equals to zero and three minus two T equals to zero. Therefore T is three over two or 1.5. That is the first thing. And now let me focus on the acceleration equation that is K and it's about differentiation. That is 60 minus 6T squared. And I can even take the six common out and I can even take the t common out and I'm left with one minus t 
over here and this is a i've simplified it to the max it's not necessary to simplify but i have simplified it so now a is negative 13.5 so negative 13.5 k is an unknown let it write as it is Square. Now we have that the acceleration is negative 13.5 when V is equals to zero. So that means T should be 1.5. So negative 13.5 K is the unknown. 6 multiplying with 1.5 minus 6 multiplying with 1.5 square. Yes, you could have taken the 6 common out and t common out, and that's entirely up to you. Or you can use a calculator, and the value of k is coming out to be 3. So that's how k is found. Find k, done. Find the total distance travel in the first two seconds of the motion. Now remember, when v equals to zero, we get a value of t as zero. That's the beginning of the journey. And t is equals to 1.5. This is the turning point for this particle. That means from t is equals to zero to t is equals to 1.5, it traveled in one direction. And then in the next half second, it is back at the starting point. So this is t is equals to 1.5 to t is equals to 2. So if I'm able to find the distance from t is equals to 0 to t is equals to 1.5, I'll double it because it's the same exact distance. So let's integrate. So displacement is integral of velocity, which we have already done. So let me just go ahead and double check. Yes, it's right over here. This is the displacement equation. That is between 0 and 1.5. So as such, you don't need to integrate it because you have already integrated. All you have to do is to plug in the value of t is equals to 0 and t is equals to 1.5. So t cubed minus half t raised to power of 4. So s is equals to 3. Uh, t cubed minus half t raised to power of 4. And when I plug in t is equals to 0, s is 0, that was already known to us. And when t is equals to 1.5, the value of s is coming out to be 2.53125 meters. Therefore, it travels this much distance one way, it then travels back. Therefore, the total distance traveled is two times this value, 2.53125, which simplifies to 5.06 meter, correct to three significant figures. Now, I have put the integration sign over here. Now, if someone has plugged in the limits of zero and 1.5 and integrated the velocity equation, which is 3t squared minus 2t cubed dt, of course, they will get the same answer, 2.5315, and then we will can double it. What I did was that I did not waste my energy on integrating it once more because I already have the expression for displacement. So now the question is completed in six and a half minutes.
2022, paper 41, question number seven. Let's read the question. Two particles A and B of masses 0.4 kg and 0.2 kg respectively are moving down the same line of greatest slope of a smooth plane. The plane is inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. A is higher up the plane than B. So they both are moving down. When the particles collide, the speed of A and B are three meter per second and two meter per second respectively. In the collision between the particles, the speed of A is reduced to 2.5 meter per second. Find the speed of B immediately after the collision. Now, first of all, we will apply the concept of principle of conservation of linear momentum, which states that the total momentum before collision and the total momentum after collision remains the same. So this we will apply in the first part and this we will apply also in the second part. So this is particle A. The mass is 0 0.4 kg. Let me write it twice. And then there is a particle B. The mass is 0.2 kg. And they both are traveling in the same direction. The speed of A is uh, 3 meter per second. The speed of B is 2 meter per second. And afterwards, the speed of A is reduced to 2.5 meter per second, and the speed of B is unknown, that is V meter per second. So the working is pretty simple. That simply says 0.4 into 3, and this is 0.2 into 2, should equal 0.4 into 2.5 and 0.2 multiplying with V. So making V the subject, we find the value of V as three meter per second. So that is the first part. Now the complex part starts. After the collision, when B has moved 1.6 meter down the plane from the point of collision, it hits a barrier. Now let me just draw a diagram. Now, first of all, So that is the first part. <clears throat> now let's read the second part. After the collision, when B has moved 1.6 meter down the plane from the point of collision, it hits a barrier and returns back up the same line of greater slope. B hits the barrier 0.4 seconds after the collision. And when it hits the barrier,
<clears throat> now let's look at the second part. The question says, after the collision, when B has moved 1.6 meter down the plane from the point of collision, it hits a barrier and returns back up the same line of greater slope. B hits the barrier 0.4 seconds after the collision. And when it hits the barrier, its speed is reduced by 90%. Let me just read till here and let me do some working. So this is the inclined plane and this is where the collision happened. And this is particle B. Let's say the barrier is over here. So it will go down 1.6 meter. It will take 0 0.40 seconds to complete this journey. It will gain some speed and hit the barrier with that speed. So the speed will be changed. Now, first of all, if a particle is going down the plane, and remember, it's a smooth plane. So if it's a smooth plane, the weight component pulling it down is mg sine theta, and it's accelerating. So therefore, the resultant force mg sine theta is mass into acceleration. In other words, g sine theta equals to a. So 10 multiplying with sine of 30 degrees is a. So therefore, a has a value of 5 meter per second square. And let me just do one more calculation also. That is, what if the same particle is pushed up and the force is removed and the forward force is zero, the backward force is mg sine theta and it's accelerating up, which in fact is deceleration. So the resultant force is zero minus mg sine theta is equals to ma negative mg sine theta equals to ma, negative g sine theta equals to a, therefore a comes out to be negative five meter per second square. Now remember these two values. Now let's focus our attention over here. The speed of b after the first collision is three meter per second. Why do I say first collision? Because soon there will be another collision. So now, the velocity is three meter per second. This is all about particle B. This is the initial velocity. And the acceleration is five meter per second squared. And the distance is 1.6 meters. So if I use the equation V square is U square plus two into five into 1.6, V square is coming out to be 25. Therefore V comes out to be five meter per second. Now, uh, extra information for this part is also given. That is u is three, a is five, time is 0 0.40 seconds. So if I use the equation v is equals to u plus a t, this is three, a is five, t is 0 0.4. This also comes out to be five meter per second. So basically for this part, it feels like extra information is given, but it's not. It will be used for the other part. Now, this is the velocity which it will hit the barrier. This is the velocity. Now, this is the speed with which it will hit the barrier. But now it will rebound with only 10% of the velocity because 90% will be lost. So 10% of five meter per second is 0 0.5 meter per second.
meter per second is 0 0.5 meter per second. <clears throat> Now it's time to read the question once more because it's a long big question. B hits the barrier 0.4 seconds after the collision. And when it hits the barrier, the speed is reduced by 90%. That means it retains 10% of the speed. So that is what we just calculated. The two particles collide again 0.44 seconds after their previous collision. So now 0.4 seconds was used up in B going down and hitting the barrier. So the difference between the two time is when B will be moving up and it will be slowing down because of this acceleration, actually deceleration due to gravity. So let's first find the speed of B. So first of all, U is 0.5 meter per second. Acceleration due to gravity is negative five meter per second squared and time is 0.04 seconds. So let's evaluate V, which is U plus AT, which is 0.5 plus negative five into 0.04. This comes out to be three meter per second. So this is the velocity of B when B is about to hit particle A. Now the question is, what is the velocity of particle A? We need to calculate. So let's start. Now the question is, what is the velocity of particle A? We need to calculate. So now the velocity of A after the collision was 2.5 meter per second and it has been moving for 0.44 seconds. And since it's moving down, the acceleration is five meter per second squared. So let's calculate the velocity of A just before the second collision. So U is 2.5 meter per second. Acceleration is plus five meter per second squared. Time is 4.4 seconds. Again, using the equation V is equals to U plus AT, which is 2.5 and A is five multiplying with 4.4. Again, using the equation V is equals to U plus AT, The equation V is equals to U plus AT. Let's find the velocity V, which is 2.5. A is five, time is 4.4 seconds. 4.4 seconds. Let's use the equation V equals to U plus 80. Yes. 2.5 meter per second. And it has been moving for 0.44 seconds. And since it's moving down, the acceleration is five meter per second squared. So let's calculate the velocity of A just before the second collision. So U of 
of A just before the second collision. U is 2.5 meter per second. And then acceleration is five meter per second square. The time period is 0.44 seconds. Which equation should we use? V equals to U plus 80. U is 2.5. A is five time is 0.44. Doing the calculation, V comes out to be 4.7 meter per second. So now this is the speed with which A will be colliding with B. So the speed of A is four meter per second and the speed of B is three meter per second, but B is moving up and A is moving down. So let me take this to be positive. Therefore, this one will be negative. So now let's start with the calculation, but first read the question again. Now it says after the previous collision and then they coalesce on impact. Show that the speed of B immediately after it hits the barrier is 0.5 meter per second. This was done a long time ago. Hence find the speed of the combined particle immediately after the second collision between A and B. Now we know that the speed of A before collision is 4.7 meter per second. This is taken as positive. Speed of B is three meter per second. Let's take it as negative because it's moving in the other direction. And then we again have A and B combined and we will find this particular speed. Let's call it W meter per second. What are the masses of A and B? This is 0.4 kg. This is 0.2 kg. This adds up to 0.6 kg. So let's do the basic maths. That is 0.4 multiplying with 4.7. And this is 0.2 multiplying with negative three. And this is 0.6 multiplying with W. So doing the basic maths and using a calculator, the value of W is coming out to be 3.03 .03 meters per second. So that is how this involved question of kinematics and momentum, applying the concept of principle of conservation of linear momentum, that helps us in doing both the parts in 11 minutes.